What's up, everybody? Welcome to SWAT MMA, where we smoke weed and talk mixed martial arts. This is episode 58. My name is Jared. I'm here with my co-host, Paul. What up? We're coming to you from the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's episode, we're going to be talking all about the results of UFC 246, Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone. We're going to take a look ahead to Bellator 238. We're going to talk a little bit about Tyson Fury and his recent comments about mixed martial arts. Before we get into all that, though, let's get started with our weed of the week. Smoke weed every day. All right, today Paul just fired up a joint of some Chemlato. This is a fairly new one for me. This is a completely unknown strain, like nobody knows what its genetics are. It is a mystery, although I would think with the title, it's got to be related to Chem Dog and Gelato. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. It does have a bit of that Chem Dog uh, diesel y taste. But uh, no one knows. So, so, I know. That's why I, I got this one just for you, dog. And then uh, we do have one other herb, which I do have some, I do have some good info on. I've got some orange Skittles, which is a, a super fruity strain. Uh, super, super fruity. It's a 60-40 sativa. It is a cross of Skittles and California orange, which uh, California orange is just one of the OG, OG strains of weed. That shit dates back to like at least 1980. Uh, there's no genetics on it. It might just be an original of something from a long ass time ago, but the strain has been in existence for a very long time. And, uh, <coughs> The Skittles is across a grape, ape, and grapefruit, so that's why that shit is just so crazy fruity. Yeah. Um, I never really pick up on the grape and the grapefruit flavors in those two strains, honestly, but the orange, the California orange is without a doubt. I feel doubt. like always, like, like, the citrusy flavors you can pick up more than, like, any other, like, the strains where, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. More citrusy, like, like tangy or, like, like, shit like that is usually where you can get a lot more tones of, like, actual flavor than... Like a great babe or something. Yeah, like that. I agree. The Tangies, uh, is its lineage is California orange in it too. Pretty oh, much okay. all the super orangey ones. Uh, Tropicana Cookies dates back with that too. Makes sense. Um, it's a great bud, man. <laughs> From what I hear, it's really easy to grow too. It's like really popular with a lot of growers. Okay. Which is why it's it's been a staple. Like a lot of those buds probably... from way back then aren't really around so much, but yeah. California oranges. You know. Well, because shit's gotten so ridiculous now. It's like there's they've done so much like. <laughs> so much like cross strains of everything so it's like everything that was once a strain is now four other strains combined into one you know right so we got these from our my favorite dispensary zen leaf coming to vegas you should check out zen leaf dispensary it's the only place in town that sells weed that's not prepackaged. this chem lotto is there uh this verano which is their house strain mm -hmm. and uh i don't know i'm kind of digging it yeah i like it um it's smooth yeah. Smooth as fuck, really. We'll dive into these Skittles later. We got a couple of Keef Top Poles here. Got some fucking bong, pipe, yep. joints. Yep. I think we're ready to roll. Yeah, let's And hope you all right are in. smoking some good weed. And let's start talking about these fights, man. It finally happened. I was yep. proven wrong, dude. I said that Connor wasn't going to come back. And not only did he come back, he came back swinging. He not only did he come back, yeah. yeah. Wow. Conor McGregor beating Cowboy Cerrone in 40 seconds flat with a severe ass whooping. That was just a... Yeah. Cowboy didn't land a single punch, man. Conor landed 19 to 20 strikes, including those... Wicked shoulder strikes. The most vicious shoulder strikes I've ever seen. Broke his nose with a shoulder strike, dude. Dude, years of watching combat sports, I've never seen anybody hit someone with shoulders like that. I mean, we've seen a shoulder strike before, but they haven't been very effective. Yeah, they're usually not. They're usually for, like, position. Yeah, just kind of like a back-the-fuck-off... You know, you get a little space uh, so you can work in the clinch. And Connor fucked him up with back-to-back. -back. Like, he busted Cowboy's nose. You said he broke it. Yeah, it seemed like he busted his nose, Cowboy, and busted his orbital up pretty well, bad right after, That's why too. Dana said he had to, get, um, had to get transported, and he didn't really get hit in the nose other than with the shoulder. Because think about it. A head kick hit him on the side of the head. Yeah, the head kick right and on the side of the jaw. he hammer-fisted him on the side of the head. He was, he was 
curled up and he was hitting him from the side. <coughs> so the only time he hit him square in the face was with his shoulder three times. And when you watch it, when he hits him with his shoulder, is when Con- uh, with uh, Cowboy's he nose busted him bleeding. up right away. Yeah. So whether it's broken or it might just be busted cartilage or something like that, you know, you know how noses are, dude. Yeah. Noses it doesn't take very much to. Well, I've had mine busted a time or two. Yeah. Yeah, it's no fun, and it don't take much. But yeah. those were how crazy is that though? I think a little bit of it had to do with the momentum though, because when Connor hit him with the first one, he was kind of running in. You know what I mean? Like he like ran into it and then just bop. It was just not. He was re- wasn't ready for it. I don't think anyone was. I wasn't at first. I wasn't even sure if they were landing. Like the original camera angle with the camera was behind Cowboy, and so you see Connor like dipping down and lunging forward, but you can't really tell how they're effective they are. Yeah, I'm gonna have to relight this. Oh, you just busted up the thing. He just busted yeah, up the I cherry right off the joint. No, it's coming in. It, oh, I got it. It's all good. Oh, shit. Look he fixed that. it. Word. He's still Surgical. good. So you can tell right away that those strikes were that effective. Yeah, so you saw him on, on, the, on the preview, and that was, uh, or not the preview, the replay. He rattled him quick. It was almost like he almost hit him with a flying knee when it started. But it was yeah. like a... Like a thigh shot it was weird his yeah. strikes were weird man he came in with that overhand <sighs> left that he missed but and like, then he hit him with like, his leg it was like cowboy like was gonna was gonna uh who was gonna shoot but like backed out last second and was like connor like tried to sprawl at the same time and just like like kind of it was like just poof. like you know it was like getting hit with your hip almost it was weird I mean, that's a move that Cowboy is more typically known for. He's got the record for the most head kick KOs. And while it, that wasn't yeah. the fight finishing, it was clearly the the, the blow that yeah. started well, it all. Well, it dropped him with the head kick. Yeah. And then how many times now have we seen someone on the receiving end of Connor's punches turtle up like that and just slump down? I mean, he looked like Chad Mendez. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he slumped well, against the cage and then just turtled up. I and... don't think he needed to take all those extra strikes, too. Herb could have stopped it. It was over, man. <laughs> like... Well, Herb made certain there's nobody saying that was an early stoppage. Yeah. And Connor got the early stoppage. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm glad Cowboy took the extra blows, but at least we don't have to hear that <laughs> Dana nonsense. almost jumped all over the reporter. He was like, wait, you said it was stopped early? He was like, no, I said late. He's like, oh, me too. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> like pressed the fuck out of him I was like god damn Dan All right. That's the fastest uh, Anybody's ever Fastest and most handily anybody's ever beaten Cerrone It was just what Connor needed to Jump back into the mix 100% He's a savage I liked everything he did before the fight He was respectful he was nice. He was charismatic. In the cage afterwards, he didn't do anything outlandish. He didn't make crazy call outs. <laughs> he said he felt like he needed to get better. He said he just wanted to get back in, in the fucking shit. I mean, all in all, I think it was exactly what he needed to do to kind of rehab this image problem he's yeah. kind of picked up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then a performance like that is what actually speaks. He showed he could be nice and not get fired up before the fight and still yeah. come in and be a fucking savage in that yeah. octagon. I mean, he beat the shit out of Cowboy. Yeah, it was not even close. Like, even Cowboy was Cowboy like, God damn it, hit. I just got my ass kicked. And Connor yeah. didn't even mess a hair on his head. No. Like, Duke could fight tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. It, it was pretty impressive. And probably still make 170. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. That's one thing about him fighting 170. Also... He he was very quick to point out that he is now has the record for the first person in UFC history to have a knockout in three different divisions. Well, in those three different divisions. Oh, in those three? Okay. Yeah. I, I was looking that up. There there's actually there is uh Jared Cannonier has knockouts in three divisions and Vitor Belfort did. But nobody has them in that those three weight classes. So there's only two other people that have it. It's not it's a short list. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, and all three of them are involved. I think Cannoneer and Vitor are the, are the only two that actually have probably the same weight classes, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, man, Vitor fought heavyweight at one time? Yeah, Vitor was a heavyweight. Oh, Dude, he was roided out like a motherfucker. I remember seeing him fight as a heavyweight, and oh, he yeah, looked early, early, crazy. right? Crazy. Didn't he fight yeah. Randy for the heavyweight title? Yeah, he won it on a technicality. Yeah, Randy's eye got yep, torn with I remember kick. that, yep. But he looked like a monster. Like, Vitor Belfort was a scary, scary, scary dude. He was fucking so big. Yeah. Like, those was roids, bro. Yo, he was clearly, clearly, yeah. dude. Yeah. He weighed like 240. He was yeah. huge. He had traps like a motherfucker. Oh, oh, shit. Party foul. It got stuck on my lip. We're still good. <laughs> Man, we're having, we're having almost Fumbles. two near accidents with this joint here. I think it's resilient. 
It is. <laughs> That's nice. That's pretty stony. Fuck. So, I mean, cowboy. I hope he got paid. <laughs> I actually wish the fight would have lasted longer because I would have liked to seen more from Connor. <coughs> um, but what can you say? So exactly what you could say. The fuck was Cowboy doing? He didn't even start. He just came out, just got fucking ran over. He didn't really have a chance. Like nobody gets it till they feel Connor's power. You know what? He, he it reminded me of Eddie Alvarez. You, you yeah. think you you get in there, and then you take the punch, and then you're like, oh, oh shit, yeah. this is not the same. Yeah. Because clearly it wasn't the same. I and mean, Justin, he went two rounds with Justin Gaethje. He took all kinds of blows from fucking Gaethje. And Gaethje, it's hard as hell. I thought Gaethje knocked him out in the first round. No, it was two rounds. They were going over it. Um, Luke Thomas was afterwards. Uh, he also Ferguson, went. Uh, he went two rounds with too. Yeah. Um, he did three rounds with somebody else. Like he's, but he couldn't take them Connor punches, man. Like people don't, don't even know. Did he? We beat don't Eddie even Alvarez? know. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Alvarez picked against it, Connor, on uh, on Ariel show. Salty. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit for sure. Yeah. So I'm. Where do you, where do you think he goes from here at this point? I think the most likely fight is for me is still the Masvidal fight, maybe seconded by um by what you think, which is I think Nate Diaz makes the most sense the next. I think yeah. Nate Diaz makes sense not for any like title implications or anything like that, just because I think one win or lose, Khabib's going to be on the shelf for a minute. Yeah, because Khabib <clears throat> always takes a, a large amount of time off for Ramadan, yeah. so he's going to fight in April and then he's not going to fight again to the end of the year. And two, how much more? Interesting is a double belt fight than a single belt <clears throat> fight. Everybody's about the two belts. So let's say Nate and Connor fight for the number one contender for the BMF slash welterweight champion of the fight of the of the world. Oh, because whoever wins. Because if Kamara Usman, Usman yeah. or George <clears throat> Masvidal wins, you, you tell me if, if either Usman, one gets that title. No, here's yeah. the thing. Even if yeah. Usman Usman can very easily up his up his popularity here if he just inserts his name into the BMF discussion and because he keeps doubting the belt he's like ah fuck that fake belt he keeps saying that like no like, add that shit it, man no nah, yeah. what he really should do is embrace it and yeah. go you know what and when I whoop your fucking ass I'm gonna take that fucking belt from you too that's Dude, I would be, be playing saying. it up if I was him. I'd be like, 100%. you got no chance to win my belt, and I'm taking what's rightfully mine, that yeah. baddest motherfucker <laughs> exactly, belt. Exactly, yeah. Bitch. Which is what, she should, what he should do, because then it turns every fight of the rest of your title reign into a ginormous oh, yeah. fight, because now you are the baddest <laughs> motherfucker in the world, and you're the welterweight champion of the world. And that's where, Nate, that's where, that's where George could very well be very soon as well. I'm good on that. <laughs> that was a coffer there Jeez Yeah um, But I feel like that Transcends You into another level Of pay And Of fights Pretty and much And it hypes up the welterweight division Quite a bit yeah. too Because you can forever say that 100% It's the best division in fucking it's UFC the best it's motherfucker, best motherfucker. <laughs> But then um, I agree wholeheartedly yeah. He should embrace it And fight Miles Vidal Yeah And sell it you be like, I'm the baddest <laughs> motherfucker in the world. I'm gonna fucking take your belt, and you ain't gonna you ain't gonna right. touch this gold ever. George, get back in line, bro. Get back, go go back to journeyman town. Because guess what? You're gonna fucking lose. That's what you got to do if you're Kamara Usman. Whether I believe he's going to win or not, that's aside. I just mean for the sake of selling the fight, I think Kamara Usman needs to push that narrative. Absolutely. Like it just makes more sense. It makes. All the sense in the world. I really don't. Now that you, I didn't really stop to think about that. But now that you've pointed it out, I can't understand why he's dismissing. I don't see why it. any of these welterweights aren't doing that. Everyone wants to discredit it. Why are you discrediting it? Why not sit there and go? Well, obviously they the, the wrong guys fought for that belt because right. I'm the baddest motherfucker in the world. So guess what? I'm the welterweight champion. <laughs> he's coming to fight for my strap. Not only am I going to whoop his ass, I'm going to take his belt too. That's what Kamar Usman should be saying right now. But instead. Yeah. He's got stupid ass Ali in his corner, who's a fucking just a spiteful person, and tells all his fighters to just come up with spiteful words to say back at guys. Yes. Like his, like that whole the whole thing, the whole Twitter hack thing. Like, uh. like 
whether that was Hack or whether it was Ollie, which had all the signs of being Ollie in the past. But that, yeah, I mean, the aside, tweets went haywire at the end, but in the beginning, it was just like yeah. typical shit. Yeah, which just, I mean, it is whatever. Sounds yeah. like some bullshit to me, but well, like with that who knows? aside, it's like, come on, like. Even Usman should be able to look at this and be like, I, there's money to be made here if I yes. want to win this BMF title. They headlined a pay-per-view at MSG with it. Yeah. Fucking with rock two, and roll with, with, with that title. With one, guy yeah. who, <laughs> with one guy coming off two knockout wins after taking two year, almost two years off, and then another guy who hadn't fought in two years since he lost to Conor McGregor, and they sold that bitch out and had like one of the top ten pay-per-views in UFC history. That would be a pretty cool scenario because then between Connor and Nate, if they do that fight while Usman and Masvidal happen, it plays out like you're suggesting. Then no matter who wins the Connor Nate fight, fight for the belt. They fight for the belt and they have a claim to <laughs> then that Leon BMF. Edwards goes back again. <laughs> But no, but they have a claim to the BMF thing. If it's Connor, oh, which yeah, I think it sure. would be, you know, he's going to be saying. like, I'm coming for it. That's what I'm it. saying. That's, then, why, that's why I'm saying it's in Usman or George's hands. It doesn't matter because if Connor and Nate fight, they're going to want to see either Connor and Nate fight for that BMF title. Right. So. Right. And if Nate beats Connor, then he can sit there and say, yo, I created that shit. Give it as mine. I'm coming I back. I think if we're, if we're talking logically Damn. here, mm. I, I would say Nate Diaz probably has the best chance of beating Kamara Usman of all three of those guys. We're talking George Masvidal, Conor McGregor, and Nate Diaz. I think, at least stylistically, I think Nate Diaz would have the best that. chance yeah. at, at really giving Usman a problem. Not because his necessarily like his his technique, but I think it's his ability to stay in the fight and go deep in the rounds, and his his ability to defend himself off his back. Yeah, Usman's not. Usman's got great wrestling, clearly, but he's not. He doesn't have super great ground and pound historically no, in his fights. And Nate holds. fights very well off his back. Yeah. So that could be very interesting. So Styles does George, though. Honestly, so does George. Yeah, he says he's not down with the crotch sniffing and the jujitsu, but yeah. I'm sure he's he's got. George's he's got, got good jujitsu. He's yeah. he fucking he's a black belt. Right. <laughs> I love how Connor picked up. Uh, did you hear Connor? He said that Usman has the sniff the jock strap style. Yeah. I, I love how they're just running with that. Fuck that shit. I know you don't because you're <laughs> you come from the wrestling, but I come from the boxing. I'm like, yeah, I love it. That's fucking Fuck hilarious. You. All you motherfuckers like to sniff balls. <laughs> 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 it's too funny. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I agree. I think stylistically, that would be uh, a good matchup. Yeah, I think that's Nate. the only one that makes the most sense. But I, I mean, like how that plays he's out. He's got to win some fights to get there. Yeah, clearly. I just feel bad for Leon Edwards. He's just out of the out of the picture. And he better do something crazy to Woodley. Unless, unless, yeah, he better fucking ruin Woodley's life. Yeah. <laughs> like in a way, people are like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Honestly, I think Woodley's gonna fuck him up. Yeah, I think Woodley's gonna win that fight anyway, and Leon's gonna. I think Woodley's gonna win in like not be in the title. I think Woodley. For that. I think Woodley's gonna win in like Robbie Lawler fashion. Mm. Like mm. he's gonna fucking sleep him. He could puts himself right back in that mix too, because Woodley's not that small of a name. Woodley's got a lot of fans. People don't. People like to front and try to discredit. Well, fuck, I'm him. a fan, and I hope yeah, he people, comes back. People try to discredit that man, but he's he's got a, a pretty strong following. Dude, he's a, he was a great champ. Yeah, and he's really not. Like he's not that far gone physically. Like he just had just literally laid a dud. Everyone says it. Everyone knows it. He didn't show any like, like any way that he was slower or or not not as powerful or anything like that. He just literally like didn't have any output whatsoever. He kind of just sat there in front of him, took the shots, defended himself, tried to take him down, couldn't take him down, and just kind of sat there. Like he, yeah. it, like how many strikes <laughs> did he throw in that fight? Very few. A negative four. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I very don't know, few. He was his ass was on the cage and he was getting punched in the body for three and a half rounds. Looking miserable. Yeah. He had that look that like Khabib's opponents get sometimes. Yeah. It's like oh fuck again. <laughs> the go. pace. I'll give it to Usman though. He's got a hell of a pace. If he, I don't, I don't know think Connor, Connor would do too that. good against Usman personally. Unless he slept him, he could. It could happen. Because Usman, although is solid on his feet, he's not. He's very stiff. <laughs> like, you know, he's he's very obviously a wrestler. 
Yeah, he tends to stand up kind of stiff. Yeah. He, he could get slapped with the right. That's why I think George has a great chance of beating him, too. Yeah. It's because George can sleep him. And it's not even that Camaro's not good on his feet. He's just not used to striking like a guy like Connor or George is. Like, that's striking is how they live their life. Like, since the beginning, since they were kids, they've been boxing or like George fucking fighting in the streets. <clears throat> if you fight in the streets mm. and you take someone down, they're fucking, everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but like, that's why I feel like, you know, if we're talking about someone who could really push Usman and make make that Connor and George fight even bigger, I think it'd be best for George to fight Usman, pick up that strap, and then fight Connor. It would be huge. Yeah, I like all the scenarios huge. to play out from that. I would like to. I'd like to see Connor even fight. I don't fucking care. You can fight Justin Gaethje in March. I don't care. Fight somebody. We're not going to hear any word until that could be fight happens I just, because he thinks if Connor really out. wants to fight four times this year, which I don't know if he can. Three. But realistically, realistically speaking, here I probably see him fighting twice. I see him winning this fight. I think George and Usman are going to fight. Probably. On the first card. You mean two more times or one more well, time? Probably only only one more time. Oh, see, I disagree there. I think only one more time. I think he's going to either hold out for Khabib or hold out for George. I think it's going to matter. It's going to be a matter of who wins. I don't know. He, he said he had this the exact opposite of what he wanted to do was wait. Yeah, but, but once again, also, he was also saying it was a one-fight deal. And if, if he, this pay-per-view did well... They're going to have to pay him a whole lot more, is what he said. He said he gave them a discount. So how much... Uh, since Conor McGregor has been out of the game, what's been the biggest thing is getting him to the negotiating table, getting him... Getting a number that he's looking at and saying, I'll fight for that number. Because he's become such a global athlete that any number is a fucking... Dis- is disrespectful at this point. Pretty <laughs> like much. any number... He needs to be an equal yeah. part. He seeks that equal 50-50 partnership. Yeah, of course, they'll never, never get It'll never now, happen. But. That's just ridiculous. But at the end of the day, it's, it, it comes to a, a situation where there's fights that need to happen and there's going to be another ne- contract that's going to be negotiated before they go into another fight. So how soon he fights, I don't know. But I think it could be a non-title fight again. Yeah, I I don't think the Khabib fight is next unless he sneaks in. I think if someone yeah, pulls out, he he'll in. take that fight in a heartbeat, and then he'll fight or, again. Or what if Khabib pulls out? You think he sneaks in and it becomes Tony and him for an interim title? Because yeah, if Khabib scene. sneaks out and then takes six months off and keeps that title, fuck that. Dude, fuck that noise for real. Um, yeah, there'd be an interim title for sure. It'd be Connor versus Tony. Yeah, That'd be sick. I'd like that fight too. And then Connor will keep fighting. He'll but, hold that interim title and he'll keep fighting. He'll fight. But would it be though? Would, if it was an injury that could be pulled out with, I think it'd be different. But what if he just like misses weight like that other time? Where he had to go to the hospital? I don't know. Well, because he takes that break. I mean, win, lose. Here's the thing, though. Pull my, out. My he's is, not fighting again until the end of the my year. My thing is, if he pulls out, do they move? The Joanna fight to the to the top, and then move a Connor fight to the next card as the main event, rather than keeping just for promotion's sake, rather than sliding him in there like on a five day, seven day notice. I don't know. What would you do if you were Dana White in that situation? I would put Connor in against Tony for an interim belt. For sure, but I'm saying, would you? Would you do it on that night with that short amount of time with your sl- 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 like very small amount of promotion for a Conor McGregor fight? Or do you kind of just axe the fight for this card? You know Khabib's going on his break anyways, and you you input it in like a month or two months later to a, another card to beef it up and give you some the time. The Tony Conor interim fight? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I think they try and keep it because they're going to do a lot of promotion for the Khabib McGregor fight. It's the next big one. I That's mean, the Khabib Tony fight. I'm sorry. I think they're. I think they would just try to run off the promotion. Fuck, they have if they're right doing there. a lot of promotion. Hide the wires, dude. Fuck, it better be a wireless area. Fuck. And the tiramisu's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's really what's next for Connor. I mean, we we can debate these these what's next things. Well, no, one but thing, I, I one avenue that's... we did not we did not venture down. That I know you don't want to venture down, but it's hmm. something we're gonna have to go down. Is this week Conor McGregor also 
made comments about he was in very, very close talks with Manny Pacquiao's team. Oh, yeah, he did. Those sounded pretty serious. also Dana White has said that they've been in very, very close talks with Mayweather's team on a rematch. Yeah, Floyd so, did tweet out a photo of, of him and Connor, Connor in 2020. 2020, the second rematch. fight. And then... He I also, do think Connor would jump at the Floyd thing instead of an MMA fight and only come back into MMA once because not just because the money because he seems to sincerely think he can beat him which I mean kudos to Connor but I don't, I don't good luck so. I, I think the Manny fight makes a lot more sense the Manny if you fight win a boxing better. title win a boxing title retire from boxing one and one it's a, it's a fucking With WBO champion oh, wait which one, which one does Manny have I think he has the IBF or something like that I can't remember WBO maybe the, I, who knows there's the too many. Ju- the one he just beat uh, Homeboy for. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's beside the fact. But, uh, yeah, I think Manny makes a lot more sense to me. Manny's older. Manny's got a little bit more... A uh, little bit more... I, want, I don't want to say, like... <laughs> like, a little bit too much damage but he, he's been he's been out there a little bit longer than floyd has you know and he's shown he can be beat i mean he got yeah. beat by jeff horn he did. it can happen yeah it can happen like like i think if connor's looking at him he's like jeff horn beat that fool i'll fuck him up he probably is <laughs> you think he holds out for allegiant stadium i can't remember when our stadium's gonna be done here but it's gonna be done by this summer because they're starting their fucking next super uh, yeah next the next football season so there it'll so be yeah. august at least so it has to be done by this summer Unless there was also something they were talking that they were talking about uh, <laughs> that they were gonna add some seats to UNLV Stadium and possibly play their preseason there. Hmm. Because if if it's not done, yeah, that's a good to have a backup plan. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't think I think it'll probably be done in time. They're cruising, man. That shit yeah. is. They're not that fucking around with that. Yeah, <clears throat> looks like a Roomba. Well, I wouldn't hate uh, I wouldn't hate a McGregor Pacquiao fight. I mean, that's the thing about Connor is he can go out and lose these boxing matches and he doesn't lose any fucking shine. No. I don't care what anybody says. Well, and maybe that makes the most sense though if you're Connor. Maybe you go, Hey, in the middle of the year, everybody's tied up, everyone's doing their bullshit. I'm gonna go fight Manny Pacquiao for a boxing title. And then in November I still am one and oh in my UFC run right now. So in November or maybe June or July, whenever these motherfuckers are ready to go, I'll be ready. I just done got, I just went and fought Manny in, I mean, Manny maybe will knock him out, but he also could dance around Manny forever and Manny will chase him and get just as tired as he does because Manny does also get tired. Dude, the only way Connor loses anything is if he goes in there and gets like slept, KO'd like, and slept like a fucking yeah. chump or just gets right battered away. if he get, if he were to go in against manny and manny just put the combos on him for 10 rounds and couldn't drop connor but just like sliced his face up then then it would really be so yeah I, I should throw a caveat in what i said connor can lose some shine if he gets just destroyed but if he goes in there and loses another close decision or Something or you can say similar, is fairly close. Or gets close. rope and doped like he did against Mayweather it's the first I mean, time. Whatever. Where, where you know, he's like, not a boxer. Yeah, but if like, he oh, fucking whatever. wins. Yeah, oh, if he wins, it's like, oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to retire trouble. immediately, though. Of course he will. <laughs> I don't even blame him. I would, he's not a fucking boxer. <laughs> yeah. Dude, then you'd have to pay him 200 mil for the fucking <laughs> Floyd Take that fight. title and keep it. Be like, nope, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> Peace. They said they were really close to signing, though. They're probably waiting to see what happens in this fight. That could be. I mean, he said he wanted to fight three times this year. Did he specify it was in the MMA cage? He said, we'll see. I mean, one of those could be a boxer. Yeah. Hmm. Would it, that well, would make the most sense. In the middle of the year, fight Pacquiao. Maybe on, like, uh, I don't know, like April, something like that. Fight him then, and then come back in July, fight Masvidal. Come back in November and fight Khabib. And then you're a double champ again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty bold. I wouldn't How hate ridiculous it. would that be if that really happened, dude? Dude, I wouldn't hate it, man. How ridiculous would it be though to, if Connor came back and just took the game over again and won? Dude, the haters would explode. Again. People but, would be so fucking mad if Connor fucking won the one seventy belt because George beat Hoosman and then just fought Connor for it because it was the biggest money fight, <laughs> even though fucking Edwards has won like eleven in a row. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure that's what <laughs> the would casuals happen, or the fucking hardcores would be so mad. At the just the Connor fans. haters. Dude, the Connor so haters mad. would be mad. <laughs> they'd be so mad. But hey, I'd love to see it. Let's I'd see it happen. It. I, I like Connor's successes. I find it enjoyable. It's, it makes. I don't get more people money. hating on it. I think it's it's a good ride, dude. I see why people maybe didn't like the Khabib build up. Yeah, that was. I gross. mean, that got dark and gross. I don't want to see that again. I'd like to see. But, yeah. But I don't see you hate on Connor. All right, he's so, still yeah, paying him his doing, money. Though. That's what's gonna happen. That's my Connor twenty twenty prediction. He's gonna fight four times, three times in the MMA cage, once in boxing. He's gonna fight Manny in April. Then I like he's gonna it. turn around. He's gonna fight George on International Fight Week in July, and then he's gonna turn around and then he's gonna fight uh, Khabib at Madison Square Garden on November, and then. He's gonna be double double. He's gonna be triple champ. He's gonna have a WBO champion in boxing. He's gonna be the lightweight champ and champ. the welterweight champ and, and the, the BMF champ and the BMF. That's five. <laughs> he's five, dude. He's is any that that's boxing level shit. Fuck Cejudo's triple C. Uh, He'll be like I'm fucking quad five C. What the fuck is bitch, five C? I don't even know. <laughs> I was going to say it, and then I was like, I don't like, know what that is, so I went, five. five. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's we, fan, we could keep talking about this shit. first fight for a while. No, I like it, too. I don't care. <laughs> How crazy know. would that be if that really happened, though? Oh, that'd be sick. Speaking into the universe, you never know what happens. Well, let's Or then again, this, Connor uh, could also just get his ass beat in his next fight and retire, too. Let's spark up this <laughs> bowl of uh, orange Skittles. Which I've topped with a bunch of Keith as well. And let's talk about the rest of this card here. Um, there's not a whole lot to talk about, dude, but here, I'm going to pass this to you. The co main event was a. Shit two show. fighters I like. I'll say that first. I like Holly Holm. I like Raquel Pennington. The fight was terrible. I didn't like the fight when it was announced. I didn't like the fight when they walked out to the fucking cage. I didn't like a minute of the fight when it was happening, and when it was over, I felt worse for having watched it. Yeah, it was weak. It was just no good, none of it. I, fucking pointless. Both of them can do better. I like, I still like them both, but please, let's not yeah, have that, that was again. A rough fight. That, was, that was just. No one got, gets anything with the win. What shine does Holly get with that win? None. none. You know Raquel what it was? gets another loss. It doesn't even look bad as a loss, yeah. honestly. The way that fight fucking played out. So yeah, it was just it was just, it was one of those fights where it just seemed like. Both girls had so much to lose, and neither of them wanted to lose it. It was you know? mainly, I mean, if, if folks, if you're watching or listening didn't see it, it was basically 15 minutes of hugging against the cage. Yeah. I mean, the last few minutes of the third, Holly started opening up, yeah. <clears throat> but it was too little, far too late. I mean, she still got the win, but I feel you could have scored it either way. I don't know. Honestly, I quit paying attention. It was so bad, I was like... Yeah, I was like... Let's smoke some weed yeah. and drink a beer. Maybe yeah. I'll get some pizza. Yeah. How long is it till Connor comes on? Oh, they're really milking this. Um, <laughs> That's what we kept saying. Like, wow, oh, they're milking this. <laughs> look how cute the dog is. It kind of went that way. You know, like, honestly. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to either of them. They're fucking great. They're two great fighters, but it was a stinker of a fight. They laid a egg. It was a pointless matchup. Yeah, it was a terrible. It's just, there was no need for that fight. So yeah. not much else to talk about there. Let's hope they both do better. I know Holly went through some shit before the fight. Yeah, well, that came out after the fight. Yeah, that came so, out after her father had a stroke. That's terrible news. Terrible news. So we, sorry to hear yeah, that. Terrible. Terrible news. It, it doesn't change that the fight wasn't very yeah, good. It wasn't I mean, a good fight, shit, and like I said, they're both great fighters. I'm sure they'll do better next time around. But let's not see that again. Well, let's let's look at a let's look at a, one of the fights on the main card that we kind of talked about before, and we we're we we're kind of wondering why it was on the main card at first, but it turned out to be probably one of the better finishes of the entire main card was that mm. Kelleher versus Osborne. Doubt really, yeah. You know, Osborne comes in as one of like the guy. Well, he's off the contender series. Contender yeah, series, undefeated. So, you know, he's yeah. You know, he's contender he's, series. Kelleher is coming off two losses. Once was the guy like Osborne coming into the UFC. He had two big wins, and he was really making a name for himself. But then lost two in a row, and this was kind of his chance to really get his name back out there. Of course, comes out with that nasty guillotine. Had with the two arms trapped, the dude had to fucking tap out that with his foot. That was pretty nasty. He tapped out with dope. his feet, yeah. Anytime you get your opponent tapping out with the feet, you're fucking doing something cool. Post-fight press conference comes up. He's uh, calling out Sean O'Malley, so we'll see how that goes. That's a clever call out. Sean O'Malley's finally making his return here. Is he fighting again? Sorry. I don't remember who he's fighting, but he's fighting soon. He's fighting in March, I believe. 
Yeah, he's fighting in March. I don't remember the guy he's fighting either. It's some other young prospect, frankly, that we probably don't know much about. But <clears throat> uh, that's, that's a good, good. call he's out. Had, yeah. well, almost like two years <clears throat> off now. So you know, <clears throat> damn, throat. it's a good chance for him to get his get his feet back under him. You know. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what he looks like. Um, he's doing some, a lot of jujitsu, so some orangey weed here. Yeah, right? it's pretty good. Yeah. That orange is so strong. Another uh, good fight on that card was uh, Diego Fajeda came out and just manhandled Don- <laughs> Pettis. For I know, former, him away. former champ Pettis is a shadow of his former self. Yeah, he's not He's not who he was. He had that, that crazy knockout on Steven Thompson. It was just lightning in a fucking bottle. And everyone man. was like, wow, he's back. Even but, us, we, we thought he was back. Yeah. No. He's, he's not. It's, it's over. I feel bad for him. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do with him though. Because I mean, as like a fan, I don't. He needs to go to like Bellator or something. Honestly, yeah. he needs to get a new camp. How long he's been at Rufus Sport this whole time? And dude, he's how old is he? He's like. He's another dis- one of those guys who's been there <clears throat> so young. And we've discussed multiple times on this show like his record since he won the championship. Yeah. And we were worried about him like you know a year ago. Yeah. And then he comes out, he looks good against Thompson, then he loses two more. But here's the thing, though. He he lo- he didn't look good against Thompson. He got peppered. Well, actually, for, he was getting fucked he, up. He was getting peppered. He looked he good for that moment. destroyed and then hit him with a Superman punch and knocked him out. Yeah, you're and right. Then, he was getting he And was then getting he did not look good against Nate Diaz. He came out and he, he, he rocked Nate Diaz early, and then Nate Diaz just single-handedly ripped him apart for the next two and a half rounds. Yeah. So, and then he looked like shit in this fight. So... It's time to change up something, the camp or the yeah. promotion or fucking something, my guy. He's just not who he once was. No. It's unfortunate, but sometimes you have to have that conversation with a guy like that. You think any UFC fighter is going to be like, yes, I'll take the Wheaties box. <laughs> Talk about the Wheaties box curse. That's the fucking terrible one right there. Yep. I mean, didn't he lose the title before the the, sh- the cereal hit the shelf? No, it, was the it was the, the week of. It was the week of. They like, promoted it with the, Fuck, with the fight. Man. God damn. I mean, clearly just coincidence, but you can't help but notice that kind of shit. Um, how about Andre Feely versus Sadiq Yusuf? That was, that a, was a hell of a fight. fight, man. Both those guys were doing great. Yep. I really enjoyed that fight. Yusuf came out strong. So did Feely, though. Feely tagged him up pretty early. And then, um, of course. There's some saying that, you know, Feely won that first round, which would have given him the fight. But either way, it was a good fight. But it's then he got fight. dropped in the second, which kind of. Blurred the lines. Mm-hmm. Really good. Hard to believe neither one of those guys are ranked, right? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Both these guys could very, very easily be in the top five or ten very soon. <laughs> Feely's been around forever. Feely's got some signature wins. I'm surprised he's not ranked. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that both these guys aren't ranked. It doesn't make any sense at all. UFC rankings never make any sense. But uh, we also had one of my favorite people in MMA get the... Just a crazy victory. Ten to one upset. Roxanne Modafari beating Macy. Remember how Barber. scared we were last week? We were like, "Oh no, yeah. Roxanne." But you know, Macy did get injured as, yeah, in the, in the say, end of she, the or beginning of the second round. Yeah, she tore her ACL. The first round, though, I mean, Roxy won the first round. Clearly, continued on to win the fight. You know, you know, she pointed out. Yeah, but one thing. One thing you have to point out with Macy Barber, though, is she had had situations like that. In two of her fights, in the first three fights in her career, where she came out and got dominated in the first round, and then came out and knocked both girls out. It could have happened. Who knows? But I'm happy to see Roxy get the win. I'm I'm, I'm bummed to hear Macy's yeah. knee is fucked up. Full ACL tear. ACL tear. She's yeah, out so nine that's about months. A, well, it's usually a year. Nine months is like when you can go back and train. Yeah. It's going to be a year till we see her fight again. Luckily for her, she's I mean, twenty. She's twenty. She's. <laughs> Young, she's yeah. going to heal quick. It sh- she, she should come she back like Connor. She still wants Connor. to be the youngest UFC champion ever, and she still has fucking a whole other year after that. Yeah. So she's got time. No need yeah. to rush back. But I'm glad to see Roxanne still get the win. She still won. Yeah. You know, she. I mean, Macy was pretty damn bloody. I mean, yeah, like Roxanne. Yeah, Roxy she was, was on the. She was on the bottom. She hit her with a fucking nasty elbow. Yeah. It was. It sucked though because like you could. It was weird how they, like, did her. It was like, they should have just stopped the fight because, like, literally they were standing in the second round and Macy was, like, trying to, like, duck and dodge. And, like, every time she'd step on that leg, she would literally let out a scream. 
she'd be like, ah, like, it's like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Like, stop the fight. Like, yeah. she's very, very obviously compromised. That was a little surprising. And then the doctor comes in and feels her knee. He's like, yep, her ACL is partially torn. Uh, I guess she can continue. <laughs> like, what? Did you notice Matafari didn't kick her knee? Yeah. She says she'd intentionally. She was like, she could tell she was injured. She's like, I'm not going to kick her fucking well, torn Well, Matafari almost fucking gave up the fight. Dude, she fucking took her down, was just kind of holding her there. And then Macy swept her with one leg. Like, she couldn't pull, like, move her yeah. right leg. Sweeps her with her, like, she was like in an open guard with her left leg out. Sweeps her with her left leg and grabbed a fucking key lock on her arm and fucking almost tapped her. It was intense. But then she, of course, got out because it's so hard to hit that with fucking gloves on. He's just not the room to really crank it, you know, mm-hmm. fucking. But uh, yeah, she got out of it. But it was, it was, it was very obvious she was done. Like there was no chance. There was well, no way she was winning that fight. That's a good win from Matafari. Hell yeah! And uh, it was kind of cool. She had uh, some. I don't know if you follow her on social media at all, but uh, some of her fans like PayPal'd her some money because <laughs> they'd bet on her and Hell fucking what? cashed in big. Yeah. She was a ten to one underdog, the yeah, biggest dog on the card. Yeah. There's a few people that made some loot off of her. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. But she's a Vegas cool. local. Yeah, hell yeah. We like her. Good for her. Too bad for Macy, but she'll be back. I'm, yeah, I'm Macy, certain. Roxy's so. got a, only an infinite, like, very small time span to get something done if she's going to win something in her career. For real, Macy's she's got very, a whole very lot of time to, to develop and become a real legit contender Absolutely. in this division. Roxy's got only probably at least two more years to really make a move if she's going to make a move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Too well, bad for her. Speaking of guys who've been a... in, uh, in the game for a minute, Drew Dober made a comeback as well. Dude, Drew, Drew, Drew so, Dober looked stole the show, dude. Last stole night. the show. Or not last night. Damn, that was days ago. Uh, um, He looked marvelous in last fight. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Just spectacular. Came out and started the pay-per-view. Oh, not the pay-per-view, but the undercard, right? Yeah. Knocked out little, uh, little Kelvin. <laughs> a little Kelvin Gastelum clone, yeah. That was pretty funny. But yeah, he has had, he had like a lot of hype coming in too, because you know, Dover's had his up and downs in the UFC. He's been he's been around for a while. He was a guy, another one of those Ultimate Fighter guys, you know that. Yep. His there's been a lot of the guys that have come in, and kind of, he's kind of one of the. The last few left, like him, Tony Ferguson. Like, there's not very many guys that are like kicking very well in the UFC that are coming from the Ultimate Fighter. I guess Gaslam came from Ultimate Fighter too, but you know what I mean. Like, the last few Ultimate Fighters didn't produce very many huge stars. No, one guy's not even in the UFC anymore, and I can't yeah. even remember his name. That's how bad it is. Yeah. So, a lot, at least the winners too. Like, like it was. It was like in the earlier days. People will come off the U- uh, the Ultimate Fighter and pretty much win a fight and then fight for the title. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like that's how it used to the be. The Contender Series has taken a lot of shine off that, and so oh, yeah. has even the YouTube series. They're looking for a fight, which is pretty sporadic these days, but it's still. That's where Sage Norgut came from. Yeah, Sage. <clears throat> he should be coming back soon from that facial. <laughs> yeah, soon. You hear his sisters over there fighting too, and one. Yeah. His, they, si- his sister did karate like he did, too. Yeah. One's making some moves. They finally got uh, Johnson booked for the title as well. He's their Grand Prix champ. Going to get him in the big title. You know, as far as uh, UFC 246, that probably wraps that up. There was some... There were better fights in the end than I anticipated. <coughs> but overall, I mean, if you, if you took the Conor Cerrone fight off of that card, that was garbage. Rough. We'd be. We'd uh, be Tim really Elliott fight was okay. I mean, we didn't talk about that one, but it was all right. It was all right. I like Tim Elliott. I wish he'd have more success. Yeah, he <laughs> just doesn't have very much power. He's got funk, but not like enough, enough power to finish with a lot of the moves he makes. Right. He's an entertaining Which, guy, though. He's yeah, an entertaining, he's entertaining fighter. He's got fun, a wild yeah, style for sure. But we got Bellator. Yeah, was Bellator it over there? Two thirty-eight. Two thirty-eight. Jesus, they're cranking them out. Yep. But this is a fairly significant card for Bellator. Significant we've got Cyborg. Making her debut. Making her debut. Fighting for the chip. And she's fighting a legit featherweight this yeah. time. She's fought a lot of illegitimate featherweights and a lot of blown up bantamweights and et cetera. Mm-hmm. Julia Budd 
She's legit. She hasn't yeah. won or she hasn't lost since she she lost to Ronda Rousey in Strike Force when she was two and two at the time. And uh, she hasn't lost since then. It was twenty eleven. She's been the champ for a long time over there in Bellator. Did you say she beat Nunez? She no, she lost. That was her oh, other okay. loss. Was she lost to Nunez? She got okay. knocked out in twenty eleven. Again, that was eight years ago. Yeah. And there's no shame in Amanda Nunez yeah. knocking you out when you're Having a brand new your fighter. Two, your two L's are from <laughs> Ronda and fucking. <laughs> And, uh, no, I mean, oh, you, oh, you got armbarred by Ronda Rousey yeah, in 2011. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. Who didn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so yeah, I think this this is actually be a really good fight for Cyborg. Yeah. Or for Julia Budd, whoever wins here. I'm taking Budd, I guess. I'm I'm picking Budd as well. I think she's going to make a statement here. Yeah. I think uh, Cyborg is the highest paid women's fighter in the world. Let's see how much she's worth, really, in the octagon still. I hit this bong now. Because, I mean, the UFC let her walk because it just seemed like she didn't really want to fight the best anymore. That's what Dana supposedly said. We'll see how much Yeah, he talked a lot of noise about her not wanting to fight Nunez again. But then Cyborg was coming out and saying yes. But then Dana was saying, yeah, but your management team says no. You say yes. Your people are saying no. So who knows, but. Um, yeah. I think if it really wanted to get done, uh, I think White would have made it. Yeah, it would have. It would have got done for sure. And I don't no think it was not to. That's and I don't thing. think it was because White was scared she'd knock her out. Like, yeah, that no. would be the greatest thing that could happen for White because then you can book a fucking trilogy, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they each KO'd each exactly. other. Exactly. Now we'll settle the beef once and for all. It's like it's like Dana White loved Daniel Cormier, but he loved it when Stipe knocked him out because that just yeah, made man. it. All he saw was dollar signs. Exactly. He's a fight promoter. Yeah. He's not a fucking fan. I mean, you might be a fight fan, but you know. He's a mean. fan, but there's, there's. He's a promoter first. Yeah. He's he's got pri- he's got other no, motives. This Keith is just burning away over yeah, there. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to fucking cover it, but it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right here. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, so yeah, and then uh, going down the card, there's actually a lot of UFC guys making their debut here. Like we got Sergio Pettis in the co-main event. Yeah, I'm more interested, honestly, in this undercard than the one we just saw uh, yeah, in the last sure. UFC event. Yeah, Sergio Pettis, signed by Bellator, making his debut against a guy whose name I can't pronounce and I've never heard. I don't. Of, so yeah, I don't no, want to butcher his name. No so insult not, to yeah. to you, my guy, but I, I can't. I can't roll. Can't it. Say it. I can't say it. But let's see what he does here, because this this could. Answer a lot of questions because there's, is is he coming in at fly? Do they have a flyweight or is it bantamweight? I think he's bantamweight. I don't think they have a flyweight division okay. for men over there. So yeah, so bantamweight, it, it's got a, they got the tournament going on right now. Mm, don't they? they do. There's a yeah, lot going so, on in these. So there's these there's some serious shit divisions going on in, in this Bellator. Division. Yeah. Or no, it's a featherweight tournament. Yeah, it's a featherweight tournament. That's right. Because yeah. Caldwell just got yep. the, the bantamweight. Speaking of that, Caldwell and Borix who are part of that featherweight tournament are going to be on this card. And that's another good one. Dude, that's a good, that's a good fight. I like to see, uh, how Borks handles Caldwell's just onslaught of wrestling that, you know, Caldwell's kind of been the kind of guy that if he can control you on top, he'll kind of start reading down the shots. But like, if you're like, if you watch his two Horiguchi fights, he took Horiguchi down, but just couldn't really do much on top. So the question's really going to come down to is like, if you can get if Borix goes down, as long as you can handle yourself on the ground, you can get yourself either back up or just start laying down shots from the bottom and make him want to get up. You know what I mean? Right. But this could also be a chance for Darren Caldwell to really show that he's he's a favorite to win this tournament. You know what I mean? Yeah, this should be a great fight. This should be great. And then another fight for that tournament on the main card is uh, we got Henry Corrales versus uh, Juan Archuleta. Ooh. Archuleta coming off uh, has just lost that kind of not super entertaining fight to uh, Pitbull. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and Henry so. Corrales has the he's a guy one of the guys who beat Aaron Pico if yeah. I remember correctly, mm-hmm. right? He's got a lot of he's. He's a tough guy too, so he's got a lot That's of. That's a solid uh, fight there. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience in Bellator as well. So we'll see what happens there. I'd like to see uh, probably get Archuleta with the huge finish, most likely, because he 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 does a lot of 
big explosive movements. <coughs> like that that's one thing that like we saw in the Pitbull fight was almost kind of his weakness was like he yeah. was he was a little too too focused on hitting those big the big shots rather than where Pitbull was kind of just picking him apart. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of Aaron Pico, I believe he's making his his comeback fight pretty quietly, which yep. he should be, frankly, against a guy who's uh, I think a bit more down at his level. What is he like seven and three? Seven and three. Yeah. Aaron's four and three. So yeah. This is good. Um, <laughs> he's not being featured up high on the card. No, he's like I've third on the prelims. Yeah. This is good. So there's no pressure. You leave some of that. Yep. Fighting a guy without, you know, a lot of noise behind okay. him. I think it's exactly what he needs here. Yeah. This Come makes out. a lot of sense. Just do your thing. Start start getting on the right track again. I feel like again. he should just dive, take a dive, and then uh, just get released by Bellator so he can sign with the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Solid career <laughs> advice, I'm sure. No, I'm just kidding. I would never say that. <laughs> no, no. no. Um, Aaron Pigo should get back on track here for sure. Yeah, he should get the win here. Hopefully. Jesus. If he ends up 4-4, four and four, he probably could end up getting dropped. But if he loses team. this one, I would... I, he's in legit career trouble if he loses this fight. I mean, get the fuck, come on, man. Yeah, four and four. You need to go down a is legacy. He still at Jackson Week now, or where is he at? I haven't heard any noise about where he's been. He was at Jackson Week for the Borix fight, but I thought he just took that fight too soon. Yeah, I thought it just wasn't enough time to really get the knowledge that those guys over there could give you. In that, well, he was there for like I want to say. Two months, three months before that fight happened, I'd like to see him get like a solid like this fight. He's if he's still there, he's been there probably about six, seven months now. This makes a lot more sense. Absolutely. But then again, Borks is also a fucking. As we see, he's in the fucking featherweight tournament. He he seems to be a buzzsaw also. So let's just say we can also kind of chalk that up to kind of being fed to the wolves. Yeah, it was some pretty poor matchmaking on yeah on Bellator's part for sure. Yeah. So and then also we got some other guys down there. We got a uh, AJ Agazam from um, from Diaz's camp coming in, and uh, I think this is his third fight in Bellator. He's two and one, I think. So that should be good. That should be a good fight, yeah. Curtis Millinder is making his Bellator debut. Wow, another I UFC didn't even realize name, yeah. he had been released. He's a fucking beast. He was on his. I didn't like, know he was either. Wow. Like he was he was this close to like. Getting right there. Remember his yeah. fucking huge win over uh, Thiago Alves. That was yes. that was disgusting, dude. That's it's crazy. But I guess that's just that's the UFC though. You drop a couple, these days, yeah. you drop a couple, and you find yourself on the streets. Hmm. He's your paper, son. <laughs> this card lost a fight, which I was really looking forward to, which was Dylan Dennis. Yeah. Um, apparently he got injured here in in, uh, yeah, during in Vegas game. during Connor's uh, preps at the UFC Performance Institute. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too: is Dennis has also had like a lingering MCL tear that he just didn't get surgery on and just rehabbed in the last six months since his last fight. Mm. And so I wonder if that has anything to do with it. We can only speculate, but it would make sense. Yeah, make a lot of sense. Yeah. So hopefully he gets a speedy recovery. Yep. He's another controversial fighter people like to hate on, but I want to see what he can do. Man, he's yeah. clearly you can hate on him all you want. He's clearly, clearly a top level jujitsu practitioner, yeah. and I, I want to see what he can do. Because whenever things man. go, anything goes south in any of his fights, he just turns to jujitsu and he's good. Yeah. He's only two and zero in MMA. Period. Not like yeah. in Bellator, but that's it. I'm a, match him up. I was, I was interested like, in this fight. Here's Let's the see. thing: is he's he didn't get uh, he didn't get a freaking amateur career. He mm -hmm. was denied an amateur career. He was told that he was he wasn't allowed to fight amateur. He said he can only fight pro. But it's like, all right, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it like, is kind of fucked up because he, he didn't fight his whole life. He did jujitsu his whole life. Right, and that's when people like to shit on him for fighting these guys that aren't very good at a low level. Well, what do you expect? He's not an MMA fighter. These aren't jujitsu matches. It, yeah. yeah, if he was fighting these guys in jujitsu, you should clown on him all day. Hundred yeah. percent. But in MMA, yeah. like what? Dude, he's it's different. What yeah. do you think he's doing? He he's never on our fought. Feet. Every round, we're starting on our feet. Right, and he has no amateur nothing. He's not a former boxer. He's no. not, not. He doesn't have shit. No. Like so, I I don't hate on his matchups. I, I just want to see what he can do. Like, yeah. let's see it, man. Makes sense. 
For real. Yep. That's... Like that wraps our show for today, my friend. Yep, I think so. It's been a fucking good, 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 w- night of good main card, yeah, you know. For intense. 40 seconds, it was highly entertaining. That's definitely by far the Connor's highlight back, of the weekend. Connor's back, bitches. Connor's back. The train <laughs> is rolling. Let's see where it goes, man. Choo-choo, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> You can catch our show on uh, WBUZ 95, radio.net, the Orange Radio app, air Thursdays, uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can find all our information on the podcast, YouTube, everything else, where? Swap so made up. Absolutely. And you can head over there and click the gear button, buy yourself a t-shirt or jacket. Hope you're smoking some good weed. Peace. Later.